Welcome back, Sawdust Makers. We know that Australian wildlife and particularly bird life is in dire need of hollow nesting homes due to the bushfires. So this is the second video in my series on making nesting boxes. You feel like you don't have the right tools and you don't know where to start, then this video is for you. I'm gonna make this as easy as possible. We're using pellet wood because it's free and available. I'm gonna be using the most basic uh, tools. I've got very easy to follow plans linked below. And in the end, we're going to have a forever home for some great Australian bird life. Two very common sizes of pellets, and I'm gonna use both. So if all you can get is this one, I'll show you how to use that to the best ability. If you get the other one, like this one, then I'll show you how to use that but I cannot be bothered trying to break this thing apart. Well, we're not going to. We're gonna cut it up, which is gonna be nice and easy. I'm confident that the most novice, handy person will be able to knock this over in a day. If you are skilled, then sure, still watch it. Maybe you'll learn something or maybe you'll just enjoy it. So instead of talking about how easy this project is, how about I just get to work and show you? Whoa, that's a little bit out there. Anyway, so this is the first standard pellet that we're going to cut up. So you can see the measurements there that we're going to get from this pellet if we just cut it up. I also uh, explained before that I'm going to use basic tools throughout. So if you're wondering why I'm grabbing this, that's why. Trust your handsaw cut through these pellets like butter. But of course if you've got a little circular saw, then uh, bust that out. This is the other sort of pellet. So you can see these are uh, a little bit wider. A little bit longer. Brute strength. Anyway, cut it up. Enough of the shenanigans. Hell of a man of the dust. Get rid of all that. So now sorting through all of the pieces for what I need for fronts and backs and sides and lids and bases and all that. Setting it all aside and we're looking good. So this is all going to be one box. Now we set out the panels that we need. Oh, look at that slow-mo handsaw. So we've done our cuts, we've got our back, we've got our front, and we've got our two sides. And then this is the timber for the base and the lid. Now, the reason why we won't cut those just yet is because if you're anything like me, your cuts aren't accurate, especially if you're using a handsaw. So we won't cut those until this is put together so we know exactly what size we want it to be. Just in case things are a little bit skew if. We need to cut some small pieces as braces to help pull this all together uh, because they're all single pieces because we are using pallets. These three leftover bits are still uh, that we haven't used and we've still got the rest of the pallet that we haven't used. We've still got a lot of timber available to us, which is great. So just marking out the, the most efficient way to use these pallets by dividing them down the guts and then down the guts again. I wish I could hammer this fast in real life. So now I'm marking the hole for the little bird to be able to get into the box. This is without a doubt a very unorthodox way of cutting a hole but like I said before trying to do it with as little tools as possible. I've basically munched that thing away with, uh, with a drill until I've got a big enough hole. Nature is not symmetrical, so it doesn't matter that my hole is uh, is rough because, you know, birds used to sleep in naturally made tree hollows, so yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm marking out some climbing grooves. These climbing grooves are essential. Not only do they uh, let some birds get in, but they make sure that uh, young birds can actually uh, climb up and get out of the hole when ready to start flying. Use the handsaw, they're rough and ready, but they will work. And then for the front. Now there are a number of ways to cut those grooves that can be done much neater than that. But, like I've said, this is about doing it with the most basic of tools. Some more gal nails, in we go. And we've got a box. Looking all right. Now, we need a lid. There's some quick drainage holes. So for the lid, we've got those three pieces across. So 
I got some bracing on the bottom, got some bracing along the top. It's made it actually quite quite solid. Stainless steel hinge, best way to go. Just marking out pre-drill those holes. And then a little bit on the back to uh, rest it against the tree. Oh, look at that, that's a bit fancy. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. That's one down. Now onto the other style of pallet, which are the wider boards. So like before, marking out my left, my right, my front, my back. Oh, look at that. There's a million ways to do this, and I'm just showing you another way. This is for the entrance hole. I'm just making small cuts with the handsaw, and then bash it. Small cuts, small cuts, small cuts, and then knock out his teeth. It's rough and ready, but it'll work. Climbing grooves, more climbing grooves, because the, the wider boards made it easy to do it like that. Check we're all good. Gal nails, gal nails, gal nails. Now without a doubt, the best thing to use on these boxes is stainless steel screws. The point about this particular video is how to build a nesting box on a budget. So I'm using galvanized nails. They're good, but they're not the, the best thing that we could be using right now. However, galvanized nails are a fairly common thing in, in most Australian sheds. So my base is in and then adding drainage holes as well. Time for the lid. Just like before, plenty of bracing. Now, see this? There's a gap in the center right where I'd want to screw. So OCD, look away. Yeah, I'm gonna just put it to the side a little bit, just so we're not screwing into that hole. I know that's gonna trigger some people, but whatever, come at me. <laughs> and in it goes. Another nesting box. So this is for the section at the back. And yes, it is gonna be on an angle, but I'm doing that to help water run off so it doesn't rot. So there's our front, 50 mil hole for our common native parrots and lorikeets. Now this is another way to do your climbing grooves. Little pieces of timber and then adding them to the front. Whoa, a lot of magic going on. However, they can rot, they can be chewed off by some birds, which is why cutting the grooves in is always the best method. But if for some reason you can't do that, then that's why I'm showing you another method here. And it's time for paint. Non-toxic exterior paint primed. They end up getting four coats each. I get right in a lot of those gaps between the pallet boards to help seal it up from the weather. And we've got this light green color because it should blend in to, to nature. Now, as always, don't get paint inside the box. Um, you don't want that because yeah, it's toxic for the birds. That's the Habishua system. Now, I just wanna quickly pause here and I wanna give a big shout out to Bunnings for sponsoring this video and the series. I want to give a big thanks to Alan at Hollow Log Homes for allowing me to um, showcase the Habishaw system, which you're about to see, and Alice from Nestbox Tales and all of her fantastic advice and patience uh, and helping me through this, and also just the incredible work that she's doing for hollow nesting birds and, and other wildlife. So what I'm about to show you now is what the experts agree is the single best method for hanging a nesting box and it's called the Habishua system. Hollow Log Homes, a business in Queensland, invented this system, they own it, have trademarked it, yet they have allowed me to show you guys how to do it and I want to thank Hollow Log Homes and I want to thank Alan. Go Tigers! So first things first, 3.15 mil galvanized wire. So to get started, just a few loops to get around, something to hang on to basically, you'll see in the end. Then we want six loops. A little more than the width of the pliers. Beautiful. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bunch them all up, make them neater. Alan's gonna laugh at this. His were much nicer than my loops. Now I'm just holding this on the end of the table because then we want 1.8 meters of wire to finish it off. I should also say that Hololog Homes 
prefer the plastic coated galvanized wire, but I'm told that galvanized wire is still just as good. So there's my rough 1.8 meters. Snap that off. Then you want to straighten that up and pass it through the holes that you drilled earlier. Your bent section you want upright like that. And then six more loops, but you're bending the wire instead of the pliers. And obviously it's a little bit dangerous if you're doing this indoors. Make sure you don't zap yourself on any overhead lights. Six loops, just like before. Now it's almost ready to hang in a tree. So what I'm doing here, a bit of hose. You can use a bit of poly or anything else, but about seven, 800 mil. Slide that over the wire. This will protect the tree as it grows. And then you tie that off through your original loop. You just want to make sure that when it is installed, you don't create a snag. So you want that wire to poke down and obviously you want a, a tight connection. The hose will protect the tree. The strong galvanized wire bunched up like that allows the tree to grow and stretch out that wire without breaking the box and ruining everything. So it's a really uh, long life system. It's fantastic. Thanks again, Alan, and Hollow Log Homes. And here we are, we've got two complete nesting boxes for Australian bird life. Not only will these boxes last a lifetime, but this was about basic tools and free materials. I announced that I was doing this series at the start of the year. I thank you for your patience. This video has taken me a lot longer um, simply due to coronavirus. However, coming up, I will be showing you how to make the best possible box and best methods of construction, how to make a nesting box that Indian miners won't be able to take over, boxes for small native marsupials, a bunch of nesting box hacks, must-haves, and a bunch of other things. And I appreciate your patience. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell. You'll also find All Sawdust Makers on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Everything I've mentioned in this video is linked below. Please leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you think, and I'll see you next time.